long time ago, when time was young, in the village of Bafula Bay, in the West African country of Mali, two rivers flowed together. One blue and one white. The place where these rivers merged was notoriously dangerous for two reasons. There were strong and unpredictable currents that sank many boats. But most importantly for our story, it was the home of an aggressive herd of hippopotamuses who guarded the shores jealously. For as long as anyone could remember, the people were afraid to go down to the river near their village to draw water, to bathe, or to wash their clothes, because they knew, without fail, the hippos would attack. As a result, the villagers were forced to walk an extra half mile down the river, beyond the territory of the hippos, often carrying very heavy loads on their heads. One day, a young girl named Sajio was sent by her mother to fetch water from the river. But Sajio had already made the difficult mile-long trip once that day and was very tired. So she decided that this time she would try to get water from the nearby bank of the river. Despite the many grave warnings from her parents, she wasn't afraid of the hippos, but rather felt a deep kinship with all animals. As soon as Sajio approached the river, a huge hippopotamus appeared in the water not far from where she stood. The hippo rose up suddenly with its enormous mouth wide open and its great ivory tusks sparkling in the sun. At first, Sajio was very frightened. She had never seen a hippopotamus up close. It was so much bigger than she expected and its tusks were longer than her arm. When the hippo didn't attack, Sajio found her courage again and resolved to try to communicate with him. She tried to make her voice soothing, like her grandmother's, the way it flowed like honeyed milk when she told Sajio her bedtime stories. Sajio bowed and touched her forehead in a gesture of respect and said, Salutations, majestic hippo. I mean you no harm. I wish only to draw a little water from your river for the preparation of my family's evening meal. Would you be willing to part with just one bucket full? Surprisingly, the hippo seemed to understand completely. In response, took a small step backwards. It closed its great mouth and began to make a sound like a gentle humming. Overcome with gratitude, Sajio dropped to her knees in praise of the gentle beast. It was only then that she noticed something very strange. This hippo was quite unique indeed. While most hippos are a solid color, this one was two-toned. Its body was the usual gray, but its feet were white as clouds, making it appear as though the hippo were wearing socks. The thought of a hippopotamus wearing socks made Sajio laugh out loud and roll with delight 
The hippo responded by imitating her, rolling on its back and making loud chirping sounds. This was the beginning of an epic friendship. Sajio went down to the river each day to visit with her friend, whom she named Molly, the Bamanakan word for hippo. She would spend hours swimming with him and jumping off his back into the water. Word quickly spread about their unlikely companionship, and the whole village went down to the river to see this thing that no one could believe was true. But when the people approached the water, the hippos rushed them, ferociously roaring and splashing. But Molly stood his ground, protecting the people, and eventually persuading the other hippos to allow the people to share the river. first time in the very long memories of the village elders, it became safe for the people to go back to the river nearest their village in order to bathe, draw water, and wash their clothes. No longer was it necessary for them to walk the extra mile carrying their heavy loads on their heads. Everyone in the village was extremely grateful to Sajio and to Molly for the peace and ease they brought to their lives. Sajio became very famous and beloved throughout the country for her wisdom and her courage. And Molly, likewise, for his forbearance. For many years, the friendship between Molly and Sajio ripened into a deep love. Though Sajio grew into a beautiful woman and received many proposals of marriage, she refused them all, saying simply, My heart belongs to Molly. One day, a handsome and prideful hunter visited the complex of Sajio's family to make his case for marriage. But, as was the case with all who preceded him, the hunter's proposal was refused. But unlike the others, this suitor was unwilling to take no for an answer. He became agitated caused a great commotion, shouting, breaking things, until he had to be escorted out of the compound. But his anger continued to fester, and later that afternoon, 
he secretly followed Saju as she went down to the river to visit with Molly. As the hunter watched the two swimming and playing together in the water, his jealousy turned to a poisonous hatred, and he vowed to have his revenge. That night, under the light of the full moon, he went to the river and killed Molly. Without Molly to protect the people, that section of the river once again became a very dangerous place, and the villagers were once again forced to walk the extra mile to draw water, to bathe, and to wash their clothes. Sadio's broken heart never mended, and she never married. To this day, a statue stands in the center of Bafula Bay to honor the memory of Mali and Sadio, and to remind us how the selfish actions of a single person can bring pain and hardship to a great many others.